In his 1928 study on antimatter, Paul Dirac proposed antiparticles, which are the polar opposites of charged particles. He asserted that, like the square root of any natural number, can have two possible solutions, namely the roots of the square root of four are plus and minus two. Symmetries in nature exist all around us. Therefore, he mathematically proposed the existence of pair of particles called antiparticles. A positron, often known as the anti-electron, is the antiparticle of an electron. It has the same mass as an electron, but the polarity is reversed. All of this remained hypothetical until two scientists, Emilio Segre and Owen Chamberlain, discovered the antiproton and antineutron in 1955. Ordinary particles are well understood, but studying antimatter is extremely difficult due to the storage problem. Ordinary matter, on the one hand, may be kept in ordinary cans and bags. However, antimatter cannot. Instead, it annihilates with ordinary matter instantly, leaving a flash of pure energy or light, making it exceedingly difficult to store. But it is possible to store it. But that's not why we're here. I would like to discuss a fairly well understood property of matter: its gravitational properties. We know that ordinary matter attracts ordinary matter, as Newton's law of universal gravitation clearly states. But what if there is another universe, or a corner of our own universe, where some galaxy is made of entirely antiparticles? We would have no way of knowing for sure whether or not that galaxy is made up of antimatter until it's too late and it's already on its way to us, annihilating ordinary matter that we can see with our telescope. We would have no way of knowing whether the galaxy or any other is made up of antiparticles, since antiparticles interact with one another in the same way that regular particles do. But if antiparticles have the opposite charge of ordinary particles and all other attributes like mass, spin, and parity are the same, how could their gravity be any different from ours? Well, we don't know. Based on this, it's possible that the dark matter that physicists have been looking for for decades that causes the universe's expansion to accelerate might be explained by the presence of antimatter gravity. However, the likelihood of this being the real event is unlikely because if it were our own world, there would be a bunch of great consequences to consider. Well, let's talk about that then. To begin with, there is a lot more dark matter, which we will assume is antiparticle gravity, which exerts the opposite force to our attractive gravity. If there is an abundance of antimatter gravity, then there must be an abundance of antimatter, which would imply that there is plenty of antimatter to annihilate with ordinary matter, which is not a good thing. As a result, thinking about dark matter or dark energy coming from antimatter is pretty concerning, but not all is unfortunate. There's always some good thing to think about. We are here, you and me. Because there was slightly more matter than antimatter at the beginning of the universe's expansion, around one matter particle for every 10 billion antimatter particles, which by pure accident resulted in slightly more matter than antimatter in our present state of the universe. So here we are, as a result of the gratitude of our own cosmos. But had it been so that we were made of antiparticles, even then for us, those would just be ordinary particles. And I want to thank you for watching.